What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and today I want to catch up with Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which is like the epic kind of fantasy spinoff game from the Borderlands series, and this game has an awesome approach to the Dungeons and Dragons formula. So in today's video, I want to talk about the kind of super weird and out there classes that we get to play as, including talking heavily about which one I think I'm going to end up as my main. But that's not all. We're also talking about the loot that we're going to get to use because there's some very interesting ones in here. But before we get everything kind of kicked off, I did want to talk a little bit about another game that's releasing in the next few weeks. And they actually sponsored this video, and that's Dying Light 2. So I wanted to give a big shout out to Techland for sponsoring this video. And in case you haven't heard, Dying Light 2 just wrapped up their final episode of Dying to Know. So what is Dying to Know? Well, it's a 30 minute show that Techland released that shows off some really badass stuff for Dying Light 2. They talked about things like new gameplay features and trailers. They had some developer interviews about making the game and even some cool fan contests that you can take part in. Now, Dying Light was a game that I really enjoyed, 100% of that thing. And then when they announced Dying Light 2, I was pumped up. And in case you haven't kept up on it, here are some of the big things the game brings to the table. A huge open world to explore, brutal combat that makes use of the weaponry and traps, the classic Dying Light day and night cycle that changes how the infected work, co-op gameplay for up to four players, and the biggest thing, which is choices and consequences. So here you're going to be given choices, and depending on what direction you go, you're going to have to accept the consequences that come along with it, including the deaths of characters. So overall, Dying Light 2 has been one I've been looking forward to forever, and we finally get our hands on it on February 4th, and because release is right around the corner, pre-orders are now open. So click the link below to learn more about the game, where to pre-order, and what pre-order bonuses come with it. All right, so that wraps this up. Let's go ahead and jump back to the video. So now that we're back, let's kick things off with a very interesting class, the Stabomancer. Now, this is a sneaky kind of crit-focused class that's basically a rogue, but they can also use magic. This class can summon like these kind of ethereal whirling blades that chop up enemies. Now, this class also isn't a one-trick pony, right? It's not all just one thing. They're a mini trick pony. They mix up guns, magic, melee attacks, you name it, the Stabomancer does it. And this class is perfect for those people who are like super indecisive. They spend hours trying to figure out what class to play. I mean, we all know those people. I'm one of those people. Everybody's been ready to play for hours and I'm still mulling over my decision. I have commitment issues. It's just, it's blatantly obvious. Now, anyway, if this class sounds like something for you, then I would say pick up the Stabomancer. They're just good enough at a lot of things to be deadly and super fun. Or maybe, you know, you're someone who would love to kind of slip into the shadows and then reappear screaming spells, waving your daggers around. That's another good reason to pick the Stabomancer as well. And that's the one thing I really love about this spinoff. This game takes the kind of over the top Borderlands approach and cranks it up to 11. I mean, you have these classes that are just super unique. They're very different than what we see in other games, which obviously makes sense. I mean, if the Borderlands team launched a game with basic normal classes, I would be super confused and I think it would lose a lot of its luster. So anyway, let's go ahead let's keep this video moving along and we're going to talk about the spell shot next. So of all of the classes, this is the one with the most normal name. You're a wizard with a gun, a gunslinger with magic. However you want to describe these things, they shoot bullets, they sling magic. Boom, we need it. So this class takes some of those classic mage abilities like transforming things into sheep or unleashing torrents of elemental magic to bury your enemies at the snap of your fingers. Now, while the Stabomancer is a bag of tricks, this class is focused more on a concentrated playstyle, and that's ranged combat. You're an absolute cannon, right? You will just demolish things. However, you are very squishy up close. So you need to be kind of quick on the draw for your spells and your bullets, but if you do happen to get into a sticky situation, you can always polymorph your enemies into livestock that'll float up into the sky and you can get away, which I absolutely love that they kept that kind of mage identity where, you know, you can turn things into other things, you know, your whole polymorph system, gotta love it. 
So I will say there was this MMO called Wildstar and they had a spell slinger class, which is exactly like what we see here. It was amazing. Love that class. Now you were kind of this like space cowboy gunslinger wizard that would just shred opponents with bullets and would just go like full scorched earth with arcane magic. It was awesome. So why am I telling you this? Well, let's just say if the spell shot is even remotely close to what the spell slinger was, then we're in for a incredibly awesome time, especially if you're someone who likes ranged combat. So gear up, get ready, because I think this one is going to be really, really cool. Now, the next class we're talking about is going to be my main. I can just feel it like I can feel it in my bones, in my soul. And that's the Clawbringer. So have you ever wanted to be a paladin that wields a spectral hammer and has a pet wyvern? If so, Wonderlands has delivered. You get to be this wyvern riding, hammer waving paladin who's just hell bent on purifying everything with fire and lightning. So the Clawbringer focuses on fire and lightning damage, right? Like we just talked about, but they're not selfish. They are team players. The Clawbringer is all about everyone else. It is not just about numero uno. It is about numero more than uno. They have something called the Dragon Aura that empowers the entire party with additional fire damage and a slew of other benefits. They're like a pharmacy for buffs. So you're this powerhouse Dragon Rider that also supports everyone else because your heart is bigger than your hammer. And that's at the end of the day, that's all you can really ask for. And to build on this whole kind of hammered in play style that's been around since Diablo 2, this class can also throw their hammer to just zap and roast everything with lightning or slam it to the ground to unleash this big fire nova, kind of barbecuing any sad sacks that are caught near you. And while you're pounding everything into oblivion, that like wily little wyvern that follows you around is just torching everything with fire. So, I mean, this is exactly what I love about this class. I like paladins, I like support, and I love pet classes. So this was like just designed perfectly for me. And the Clawbringer is probably gonna be my main unless the last class is just something completely over the top. So Clawbringer, gear up. You're gonna see a lot of content around that one. Now, if for some reason I can't be the Clawbringer, I want to be the Frosty Barbarian, the Berserker. Now this bruiser is like all about getting up close and personal, right? They love to just get in the face of enemies, but they don't only swing a huge ax and speak loudly. They also have the ability to freeze enemies and then shatter them into a thousand pieces. So honestly, you can't really ask for more. So this one is a bit different than we've seen in other games, right? Typically berserkers and barbarians are all about, you know, bleeds and these like extremely physical attacks. But the Berserker here is almost like this frost giant that's just obsessed with melee carnage. So as a Berserker, you're going to be specializing in melee and frost damage, which makes sense. But you're also going to be taking advantage of Enrage, which is this buff that's granted by using your skills. And once you're enraged, you get to channel the power of frost through your weapon and you can freeze the hell out of everything. But here's the kicker, right? Berserkers are hardy characters, okay? They're like a radish or a turnip. They will just take a pounding, but no one is immune to damage. However, this class does have a way to help kind of offset all the damage you'll be taking. And that is the fact that this class can leech health from dead enemies to stay topped off. It's a really cool combination of skills, right? I mean, you Whirlwind to Enrage, which is called Dreadwind, and then that gives you a frosty boost of damage, and then you deal even more damage, and then once that thing that you've been kind of just like chopping on is dead, you steal their life force to heal yourself, which is just absolutely metal, and I love it. So Berserker just looks so unique. I love the play on words. It's just, it's awesome. Now we do have one last class that has not been revealed yet. And if we look at kind of what we have so far, I'm guessing we might see like a bard or something that plays music and supports the party. I mean, it only makes sense as a D and D inspired game, but because this is borderlands, because this is kind of a wacky game, we're probably going to see something completely different. Maybe like a class that weaves like the bard and the tank class together to be like a support, you know, thing, but also absorb a bunch of damage. I'm not entirely sure, but I am, I could just like foresee like a super ripped bard 
that plays like an accordion that puts shields on everything or like something completely off the wall, right? I mean, like I said, this is a Borderlands style game, so it's going to be uber interesting, but we do have one class left. I'm not sure when we'll see it, hopefully sooner than later. But at the end of the day, this is our lineup so far. So what do you guys think about all of the classes in Wonderlands? Is there anything that kind of catches your eye? Or are you kind of like, mm, these are very unique, but they're boring. I, I don't want them. I want to hear from you guys in the comment section below. So let's talk about hardware. So when you think of Borderlands, you think guns with legs. That's the level of creativity we're dealing with here. So what will our fearless hero, the Fate Maker, get to use to cleanse the Wonderlands? Well, we obviously have the classics, right? We have pistols for those with the trusty aim, SMGs for those that can't aim at all, assault rifles for those that are in between, and for those that like to see the fear in their enemy's eyes, shotguns are there for you. If you're not a big fan of that experience, then you can take a sniper rifle and make the kill extremely impersonal. It's up to you. If you're more of like a big explosion connoisseur, take a heavy weapon into battle and you'll get to fulfill those needs. So that is what we're looking at in terms of weapon types. But what if, you know, you're wanting a mix of all of these? Well, that's the cool thing is you're in luck, right? Because Wonderlands will give players four total weapon slots to bring a grab bag of things that inflict pain. And that is exactly what we're looking for. You can bring a pistol, an SMG, an assault rifle, and then maybe a sniper rifle. You know, you can bring a whole slew of things with you to make sure that you have the tools needed to get the job done, which we love. And to kind of build on this, we also have a slew of weapon manufacturers whose weapons will either excel or fail in certain situations. So being able to take the right one to the right fight is going to be important. So first up, we have Dahlia, who specializes in swapping firing modes. You have full auto or burst fire. It's a choose your own adventure to kill things. Then we have Black Powder. These guns have a unique perk that makes their bullets ricochet on headshots because sharing is caring. Next up is Ferrior, a kind of whimsical brand whose weapons will take on new forms when you fling them across the battlefield. So you're shooting something, you run out of bullets, you hit reload. Instead of like dropping the magazine out and loading another one, you just throw your weapon. You're like, I'm done with this thing. You throw it and next thing you know, it grows wings and it's attacking from the sky and it's blowing things up. And that's just, I mean, that's awesome. Then we have Stoker. So Stoker, their claim to fame is being the fastest fire rate imaginable. I mean, sure, you're gonna burn through ammo like crazy, but the enemy's health bar drops just as fast. Now, the last three are Torg, Skulldugger, and Hyperius. So for Torg, you guessed it, explosions. I mean, if you like explosions, Torg is the way to go. Skulldugger is all about arcane trickery. These will generate their own ammo, so you don't have to go buy ammo or refill, but these do come with a catch. They will overheat and you need to take a break from time to time. You can't just sit there, hold down the trigger, and watch everything fall over. Now, Hyperius is our last manufacturer. These ones, kind of like other Borderlands games, these are going to provide a barrier to help protect the shooter, and they become more accurate as you fire. So you want to hold down that trigger, get to streaming, and don't let off until you have to reload. That's the best way to use a Hyperius. And because this is Wonderlands, all of these weapons will come in a rainbow of rarities. Each of them is going to give more or less benefits to take advantage of. So here we have the usual suspects, guys. I mean, we have the commons, the uncommons, the rares, the epics, and then the legendaries. Now, legendaries will have highly sought after effects that will crank up your damage and boost your survivability, which means even more carnage. So those are naturally the ones we're going to be looking for, but you're not going to get them early on. You need to work your way up to them. So folks, that is it. For this video, we have so much more to learn about this game, but I'm very excited that we actually get to see it this year because in terms of Borderlands, I love Borderlands. I love the franchise, the series. Sure, there's been ups and downs. There's been some that I like more, some that I like less, but Wonderlands looks really, really good because as you all know, I'm a big fan of high fantasy and taking that kind of theme and just smashing it into the Borderlands formula, I think is going to be fantastic. So I want to hear from all of you. What do you think about Wonderlands? Everything that we've seen so far, does this look interesting? Is this going to be a pass for you? I have to know. So leave me a comment in the comment section below. And if you're interested in learning more about Wonderlands, check the link in the description below as well. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you next time.
Reach up and grab the world by the hand and watch what comes along.